safer place than in the arms of God. Amen. So glad to see everybody here today. And uh, glad to have Y.D. Hutchins, a friend of mine, here today. And uh, his mother with us. Amen. God bless you for being in service. Glad to have my friend. I'm going to call your name wrong. What's your name? Wayne. I was going to say William. See there, I, something about this microphone messes me up. Glad to have Wayne here today. Betsy. Amen. And everybody else in church. Amen. Amanda and Betty with Miss D today. God bless you for being here. God's good to us, isn't he? He's good all the time. Amen. And so let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. I thank God for for his blessings. Luke chapter 1. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 2. The book of Luke chapter number 2 for our scripture reading. Verse number 25. Luke chapter 2. Verse number 25. The Bible says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy words. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy soul also, that the thoughts of the hearts may be revealed. Can you say amen? Amen to the Lord's word. Would you just reach your hand up toward heaven and ask the Lord to help us today. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your house. Thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. Help us, Lord, as we go to your word. Lord, we're unworthy, God. Stand before your people this morning. I pray that you help us to preach your word. I pray that you touch our hearts and our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you would have to say to us, Lord. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your power. Lord, we're fully aware of our inability, but we also know of the grace of God and the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that can touch us in a way that we're never the same after we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, talking about Simeon here, and uh, I would like to preach this morning on while I'm waiting. While I'm waiting. Is anybody waiting this morning? Is anybody waiting on something? Are you waiting on something from God? Are you waiting on someone to get saved? Are you waiting on God to maybe move for you? I mean, a lot of people are waiting on their ship to come in. And uh, I heard the other day said I was waiting on my ship to come in. When my ship come in, it was a canoe. Uh, but uh, And then somebody else said, said, I hope my ship comes in before my dock rots. But... Uh, are you waiting on something? We wait and we have promises. God in Christianity, he gives us promises. Amen. The Bible talks about hope. Amen. We have hope. Matter of fact, we believe in heaven because of hope. We serve God because hope. Have you got hope this morning? I have hope, hallelujah, of a land that's better. I've got hope, amen, that God's going to come through. I believe God. Well, it's always been that way. Amen. To wait on God. To wait on Him. God is pleased when we wait on Him. Sometimes we get in a hurry and we find ourselves in a mess. Hallelujah. 
God help us this morning. But Simeon was this man, the Bible says, Amen, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same was a just and devout, waiting for the consul. He was waiting on the Messiah. He was waiting on Jesus Christ. He was waiting. He didn't know, amen, that it was, that this was the one except that the Holy Ghost had showed him, revealed it unto him. When he came in, the Lord had revealed to him that he would not see death until he had seen Christ, the Messiah, the Lord's Christ. I want to preach this morning on while I'm waiting. Amen. And, uh, you know, you can wait. On things and circumstances, and you just you know you just sit there and wait and do nothing. But other times you can be busy while you're waiting. Amen. And so I like to talk to us about these things. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost was upon him while he was waiting. The Spirit of God was upon him. While I'm waiting, I want the Holy Ghost to be upon me. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he was revealed. That it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. While I'm waiting, I want God to reveal things unto me. Thank you, Jesus. And then lastly, the Bible said in verse number 27, He came by the Spirit into the temple. And I would like to preach to us this morning, while I'm waiting, amen, to be led of the Spirit. Praise God. You can wait on God and we can sit and do nothing while we're waiting on what God's going to do. Or when, when God comes through for us, we can be so full of the power of God like Simeon. He was led of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, amen, God had revealed unto him. Revealed unto him. I believe that the Holy Ghost can reveal things unto us. I want God to be able to reveal things unto me. I want to have a teachable spirit, amen, that the Holy Ghost can teach me, that the power of God can teach us, amen, while I'm waiting, waiting. I don't know what you're waiting on this morning, amen. I don't know if you're waiting on a great miracle from God. I don't know if you're waiting on God to come through for you. I don't know what all we're waiting on, but I, I dare say that many of us are waiting on God this morning. Amen. Are you waiting on God this morning? Hallelujah. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on God. Don't get in a hurry. Wait on God. The Bible said, amen, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's God's will for us to wait on him. Amen. Simeon was waiting on God. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. It's not easy to wait. And I want to tell you something this morning. I believe that if we'll wait like Simeon, it'll be a whole lot easier for our waiting. Hallelujah. Praise God. He was waiting and the Holy Ghost was upon him. It's important for us to believe the truth of God's word. Amen. And believe God's word in a way, amen, that it gets a hold of our life. The Bible says, hallelujah, that uh, Samuel went down to Jesse's house. Amen. Because Saul wasn't serving God and the Lord had rent the kingdom out of his hands. And he said, go to the house of Jesse. I'm going to anoint one of his sons. And so Samuel came to Bethlehem and the whole city was moved when Samuel came in the city. Ain't that amazing? Wouldn't it be something to have the power of God on us in a way? Hallelujah. That people get shook up when you even come in their presence. Samuel came in Bethlehem and the power of God and the, uh, the, the honor of God was upon this man. Hallelujah. And he had such a reputation for hearing from God that the whole city was stirred up when he came in the, into the town. And the Bible said that he said, I've come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he said, call Jesse. And Jesse came and his sons. Well, Jesse had, amen, eight boys and, and he caused all seven of his sons to pass forward, but he didn't even bring David to the sacrifice. Amen. He said, call Jesse and his sons to the sacrifice. And so Samuel sitting there and he said, we will not eat 
Amen. Until we take care of business. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I'm talking about the Spirit of God was upon him, upon Simeon. I'm preaching this morning on while I'm waiting. Hallelujah. While I'm waiting. Is anybody waiting this morning? Is anybody waiting on something from God? Well, what are we going to do while we're waiting? Simeon was waiting also, but he didn't sit on the couch. Hallelujah. While he was waiting, the Holy Ghost was upon him. And, and back to Bethlehem, here they are. And, and the Bible said, they said that Jesse, that Jesse caused all his sons. The first one got up. Amen. And come before Samuel. And he was such a nice looking young man that Samuel said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. And God said, Samuel, don't look on the outward man. For man see looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. You see, we can fix ourselves all up and go to church. Amen. But God doesn't look at my suit and tie. Amen. He looks down at my heart, down in the depths of man. And the Bible said that he called seven of of his sons to pass before him. Amen. And Samuel said, is this all your sons? You mean, you mean this is all of them? He said, I've got one more. He's ready. Amen. He don't even have, you know, he's keeping the sheep. Samuel said, we're not going to eat till he comes. They called Jesse. Jesse came in and the Bible said that the Lord said unto Samuel, arise and anoint him for this is he. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that he took a horn of oil and he poured it on David's head, just a little bitty boy. I'm telling you, God can anoint you young people. God can anoint you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can say, I'm just a teenager. Amen. I'm just somebody young. I'm I'm just in this. I'm this. I don't have all the abilities. Uh, amen. But the power of God was with God's calling. And when they poured that horn of oil on David, the Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. While I'm waiting, I want the Spirit of God on my life. The Bible tells us about Stephen. Amen. Stephen is the one that they stoned and he looked up and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the throne of God. Who was Stephen? Was he apostle? No. Who was Stephen? Was he a disciple? No. Who was Stephen? He was a deacon. Amen. The early church, amen, had so much work to be done in, in taking care of tables and feeding. Amen. They said, amen, the apostles was leaving the study of God's word and prayer. Amen. To take care of feeding people. And they said, find men, amen, that can do this for you and you can stay in the word of God. And they found seven men and Stephen was one of them. Amen. Stephen was a man, the Bible said, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. What? Amen. What a, uh, I don't know the word I'm trying to say, but what, what a title. Hallelujah. Woo, what about Stephen? He's rich. No, that's not his title. Hey man, he's rich like that song you sing. I'm rich in faith and hope and love. I've got more than my share. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stephen was full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter number 6 and verse 5, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip and then it goes on down through the names there that I can't hardly pronounce but Stephen was a man that was full of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The Bible said when they stoned him, amen, when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said behold I see the heavens open hallelujah and the son of man standing on the right hand of God amen I'm talking about while I'm waiting it's important for us to realize while we're waiting on God to come through for us to get full 
full of the Holy Ghost. David was full of the Holy Ghost long before he ever ascended the steps to the throne. Amen. He was full of the Holy Ghost as a young lad. Hallelujah. And he was just awaiting. Amen. And he never got in a hurry. And that's a message on itself. And I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters, while we're waiting. I feel like I'm preaching to people this morning that's waiting on God. You're waiting on God to move for you. You're waiting on God to answer your prayer. You're waiting on God to save your family. You're waiting on God to move for you. Amen. But while we're waiting, Simeon was waiting on the consolation of Israel. But while he was waiting, the Bible said the Holy Ghost was upon him. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Judge, Judges 14 and 6. Amen. That the Spirit of the Lord moved mightily. Verse number 6, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Glory to God. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father and mother what he'd done. Amen. Samson, this line roared against him. I want to tell you, young people, there's a line waiting out there that'll roar against you. Amen. But the Spirit of the Lord. You know, we think of Samson as this big, mighty man. But the Bible never tells us that his stature or his size or his physical strength was any stronger than a normal man. Every time that he'd done great things, even though God used his strength, and he pushed the building down, he picked up gates of the sea and carried them off. Amen. Weighing thousands of pounds. According to commentators, amen, he, he killed men, amen, with, uh, with a, a jawbone of a donkey. But every time that he'd done mighty things, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. I remember this man, amen, from up there close, he's gone on to be with glory out in an old country church down south of, of where I was raised. Amen. He would shout and praise God. A little bit simple in his mind seemed to be. Amen. But one night he come to church and he was there late and it was in the winter and uh, it was getting dark and uh, it was and, and he come in late. To, amen. He said, I want to tell you all why I was late. He said, I had a flat tire out there on the road. And he said, I kept trying to put my spare on there and I couldn't get it lined up. You know how it is. And this was an older brother. He couldn't get it lined up. And he, he said, I didn't have a flashlight. He said, I couldn't see. He said, I took time trying to get those get those uh, lug nuts, you know, just to go through that spare tire. He said, I couldn't get it. He said, finally, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, I shoved it right on there. And it went right on. I'm going to tell you something about the power of God. While we're waiting on God to move, the power of God can come on us like it did Samson. Amen. And he carried the gates of the city. When the lion roared against him, he caught him and rent him like he would a little baby goat. Amen. While I I'm waiting. I want God's spirit on me. Don't you? Amen. I don't want to just sit and wait on God to come through for me. But while I'm waiting, I know God's going to come. Simeon said, I know God's going to come through for me. Amen. I'm going to see the consolation of Israel. I'm going to see the Messiah. But while I'm waiting, pour the Holy Ghost out on me so I can be a blessing to somebody in this life. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The Bible talks about Gideon. Amen. Many times we look at our natural strength. Amen. We look at our natural abilities. Gideon goes down to fight. Amen. And the Lord says, you got too many. He said, ask every one of them that is scared to go home. Hallelujah. Amen. Gideon said, is any of you scared? Go home. A bunch of them went home. I think he had about 14,000 in. Amen. God said, Gideon, you still got too many. He said, you got to send them home. He said, bring them down by the river. Why? Amen. Because God wanted all the glory. I want to tell you why our situations get so desperate sometimes. I know why they get out of hand so many times. So God can get all the glory and we won't get none of it. Amen. And he ended up with 300 men. And the Bible tells us in Judges 6 and verse number 34, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Hallelujah. And he blew a trumpet. Amen. God gave him the victory. Amen. And God 
God told Gideon, Hallelujah, church. I feel like somebody's waiting here this morning. I said, I feel like somebody's waiting on God to move for you. And I come to preach a simple message to you. While I'm waiting, I want the Holy Ghost to be upon me. I don't want to just sit in my house and never feel the presence of God. I don't want to just go to church and never feel the presence of God. What are you doing? I'm waiting on God to move. Yes, I'm waiting on God to move, but I know God can do it, and I'm going to trust Him to do it. And while I'm waiting, I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He told Gideon, he said, go down, go down in the middle of the night if you don't believe. They went down to that tent of the Midianites. Even they didn't know they was there. Hallelujah. Gideon didn't know. There was only 300 men. He was kind of wondering. Have you ever wondered how God's going to come through for you? I've been there before and I thought, oh God, how are you going to do it? He said, go down there and listen. Gideon went down. Brother and sister went down there in that tent. He was on the outside of the tent. And there was two men Hallelujah, talking. Hallelujah. And they said, hey, I had a dream. He said, you had a dream. What was it? He said, I dreamed that there was a big old barley cake. Woo, hallelujah. Now, I've seen some big pancakes. I've seen them, you know, I mean, thick and big. But this man dreamed about a big one. He said it was so big that it come rolling down from Israel. He's telling this and Gideon's on the outside eavesdropping. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, I had a dream and a bar to take come rolling down from Israel. And he said it smashed all the tents of the Midianites. Hallelujah. Amen. And the other man that was listening to the dream, I know y'all read that story. He said, oh, this is nothing more than Gideon and the power of God. Gideon got up and ran back. I come to tell you this morning, God's able to wipe out the enemy. Amen. All they did was blew the trumpet, lit their candles. Amen. And such fear had grabbed the enemy, that they killed one another on their way out. Amen. All they had to do was chase them down. I'm talking about while I'm waiting, I want the Spirit of God to come on me. While I'm waiting on God to move, I don't want to be dry. Somebody said dry as cracker juice. Our soul get dry as last year's bird's nest. (laughs) Dry. It's not God's will for us to be so dry. It's not God's will for us to be so empty. Well, say, I'm a waiting. Well, Simeon was waiting too. And while we're waiting, it's not God's will for us to just dry up, amen, like a prune on the vine. Amen. We've got to be flourishing in the house of God, full of the power of God, worshiping God with a praise in our, on our heart. Amen. A praise in our mouth. Amen. I'm waiting, Brother Sam. I know Simeon was waiting too. But while he was waiting, God was revealing things to him. While he was waiting, amen, the Holy Ghost was upon him. While he was waiting, he was living for God. And I know God's going to come through because God is not not a man that he should lie. And if he told you he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you. And if he told you he's going to save your family, he's going to save your family. Amen. If God said it, I believe it and that settles it. But while I'm waiting, can I get a witness this morning? While I'm waiting, I want to be like Simeon. He was full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was upon him. Amen. God was revealing things to him that nobody else knew. Let me tell you something, brother and sister. I'm not talking about this fake stuff. Amen. Talking about, I mean, you know, I know God don't always move the way we think he should. But I, y'all might, some of y'all might remember this. But you know, there's all kinds of garbage out there. Fake stuff. Amen. But I'm not talking about fake stuff. I remember a time, amen, this man when uh, Osama bin Laden was trying to find him, he said God told him where Osama bin Laden was. Amen. He said, but God told him not to tell nobody. Well, of course God told you not to tell nobody because God didn't tell you where he was. You made it up. Amen. If God told you where he was, you know, tell him. Amen. 
Amen. I remember they was always getting filled with gold teeth. <laughs> Amen. We was talking about it the other day. There went up, there was a, you know, a thing that went through, you know, people would pray for one another and they'd get gold teeth in their mouth or see people would see gold dust. I'm not saying God can't do that, but I'm talking about something more than a gold tooth. I'm talking about something more than gold dust. Amen. On their hand. I'm talking about the power of God that'll comfort you when you're down. That'll heal you when you're sick. That'll give you strength to pray. Amen. And strength to live for God. Amen. A bunch of that stuff ain't nothing but a bunch of garbage. I come to tell you God will meet your need. But I didn't come to tell you God's going to buy you a brand new Cadillac. Hallelujah. I come to tell you this morning, God will meet your need. But I didn't say he'd make you a millionaire. You might have to pay some late fees on the bills sometimes. But he'll make the bills pay. Hallelujah. Praise God. There may be times you wonder how we're going to make it. You may not always eat steak. Hallelujah. <coughs> you might not always, you know, sometimes it might be something else. Praise God. But God will always come through for you. Amen. And I'm not talking about fake stuff. I'm talking about real. I didn't come to hand out keys to a Cadillac this morning. I didn't come to prophesy and say God's going to make you a millionaire. But I get, did come to tell you while you're waiting. You can get full. And I can get full of the power of the Holy Ghost. In a way that he would reveal things unto us. Where we can be a blessing in this day and hour. Where God can use us like never before and we can make a difference and we can make it all the way to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you can find somebody that will prophesy over you and tell you what you want to hear. They're a dime a dozen. I heard this one guy, he said, send your check. He said, send the money. He said, the money ain't in the bank. That's all right. Send it anyways. He said, I'll tell you the key to getting God to put the money in there. He said, down there in the memo, he said, right, money cometh. And he said, when God reads that check, he'll put the money in the bank. I thought, man, you're crazy. I tell you what to put money in the bank, those bank charges. You mail that check to that preacher, you know it's going to clear. And you're going to have to pay some bank charges, so you're going to put money in the bank. And then he's going, he's going to convince me that money cometh. My God, I didn't talk, I'm not talking about stuff like that, but I'm talking about real. Amen. I've seen it where we prayed and God moved. I've seen it where God moved. Amen. I've told you the story before, but my mom, all us kids, there's 11 of us kids, and we are hungry. She's at the grocery store buying just a little bitty, little bit of food because we didn't have much money. Amen. I was a little boy. She saw a little sign on the door said, lost dog, $400 reward. Amen. It was a canine dog. Amen. A German shepherd canine dog was lost. She said, can I have one of those? They had extra. She took it home and began to pray over it. Four days later, that dog came right through our yard. Amen. And she called them. Hallelujah. I can just see the angels saying, come on boy. Come on. We got to go. He was lost over five miles away. Amen. But there was a praying mama who said, Lord, you can and give me that $400 and I'll never forget when that man came in our kitchen amen and laid $400 down and he said here's an extra one amen because she found the dog she didn't find the dog the angels brought the dog right to our yard I'm talking about a God that'll meet the need I'm talking about a God that'll move but while I'm waiting while I'm waiting I want to be fine all of his power. The Bible said he waited and I'm done. But he was, he was led of the Spirit into the temple about the same time. Y'all got to get this. You got to get this. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. They're coming to Jerusalem to the temple to perform the things according to the ceremonial law to this firstborn son. About that time, old Simeon is over laid out on his couch asleep at 2 o'clock in the afternoon waiting on God. I don't think so. Because when you wait on God, you're busy. Hallelujah. 
Woo! I can see Simeon. I don't know what he's doing. But something touches him. And it's that feeling that only we know. It's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. It's time to go to the temple, Simeon. Wait. It's not. Why? Uh, it's not church. Go to the temple, Simeon. Right now, go to something is telling him to go. Hallelujah. You see, he was waiting on to see the Messiah. And yet, you know, he could have missed it so easy. If he wouldn't have been led of the Spirit, the Bible says that he was led of the Spirit into the temple about the same time. Glory to God. Hey Amen. Let me just read it to you. He came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought the child. Jesus. Uh, amen. They didn't have an appointment. Uh, he didn't have brochures all over town. Uh, oh, I wish I could get this across. Uh, but while I'm waiting, I want to be led of the Spirit. Uh, I said, while I'm waiting, I want to be led of the Spirit. Uh, you know why it's important to be led of the Spirit? Uh, because the Holy Ghost knows all things. Uh, he's the third person of the Trinity. Uh, amen. The Holy Ghost, uh, the Bible said, would reveal truth unto us. The Bible said the Holy Ghost would tell us about Jesus. The Bible said if we walk in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Bible says, amen, that the Spirit can lead us and tell us things to come. While I'm waiting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Bridges tells about that man in Georgia. He's out in World War II. He's plowing in the field. Mama's in the kitchen. Amen. I think he said his mother-in-law was living there at the time or maybe close by. He said he's way out in the field and said the Holy Ghost told him, it's time to pray for your son. He said he comes in. Amen. Comes in the door. Mama. We gotta pray for whoever his son was, John or whoever. We gotta pray for John. Hey Amen. I was out plowing in the field. Hey Amen. And the Holy Ghost told me we gotta pray. Hey Amen. For our boy. Oh, God help us. He said he prayed and said, God, you know when he got on the train that he wasn't saved. You know he wasn't living for God. I stand on your promises, God. You said you'd save my children. Hey Amen. Oh, he didn't no, amen, but he was captured, amen, in a foreign land by the enemy troops but the Holy Ghost knew I said the Holy Ghost knew amen, y'all know Sister Shirley was preaching for us, she told us a story, and I've heard it before Brother Stacy Holton's dad who passed away, I'm talking about being led of the Spirit, amen hallelujah, he's in Vietnam amen, it's in the middle of the night in America, amen and his mama wakes up and said everybody Everybody get up. We got to pray. We've got to pray for John. Amen. They didn't know, but he had been shot by the Viet Cong in the leg. And he was laying there in enemy. Amen. In enemy territory, fixing to get him. And they'd have killed him for sure, tortured him. Amen. But they was a praying mama that was led of the Spirit. My God, help us while we're waiting. What are we waiting on? What are you waiting on? Amen. What am I waiting on? But Simeon was waiting, no doubt he waited a long time, amen, but while he was waiting, God was showing things to him while he was waiting, God was a blessing him, and while he was waiting, he was being led of the spirit hallelujah he comes into the temple about the same time they're coming in somebody said that's just happen chance that ain't happen chance, God directed it all Woo! God knows how to order your steps just right where you're at the right place at the right time. I mean just at the right place at the right time. My God help us. The Bible said order my steps in your word. Hallelujah. <coughs> Keep us from danger. Amen. It would be a car wreck. would have been a death if God hadn't have stopped us. If God hadn't have slowed us down. I'm talking about while I'm waiting. Are you waiting this morning on God to do something great for you? I know God's going to do it. I know God's going to do it. I know God's going to bless you. I believe God. But while we're waiting, we can't just sit here and dry up. 
While we're waiting on God to move, we can't just sit here and fall asleep. While we're waiting on God to move, let's let God move for us. Let's got let's let God lead us and God us. Stand together with me this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. I know there's somebody here that's awaiting on you, God. I know, God, there's somebody here that's seeking your face. I know, God, there's somebody that's awaiting on you, Lord, to move. You might have gave them a promise like never before. I want to tell you, God will heal your body. Hallelujah. God will touch you. God will move. I'm not talking about nothing fake this morning. I'm talking about the real thing, the real old time power of God. Amen. That'll touch a life and transform it. Hallelujah. That'll heal sick bodies. Where it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. And nobody can explain it, but it's gone. Where God can give you a job. Where God can bless your finances. Where God can move for you. And God can bless you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody's got a need this morning. Somebody's got a need this morning. And you're just away. Waiting on God. Somebody's waiting on God to come through for you. Amen. God is going to come through for you. But while you're waiting, Simeon, while you're waiting, Simeon, what are you doing? Oh, the Holy Ghost is upon me. The Holy Ghost is revealing things to me. Amen. The Holy Ghost is leading me. Holy Ghost, lead us. Holy Ghost, lead us. Oh, won't you stretch your hand up and say, Holy Ghost, lead me. Lead me. Direct me. God, lead me. Put me in the right place at the right time. Bless me, Lord. Hear my prayers, God. Reveal things to me, God. Show me your way, God. Show me your glory, God. God, while I'm waiting on you to move in my life, while I'm waiting on you to save my family, while I'm waiting on you to make a way in this financial need, while I'm waiting on you, God, don't let me dry up. But Lord, let me be like Simeon. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we gather in this morning? Hallelujah. Just gather in for prayer. If anybody's here and you want special prayer, I want to take time for...